Merry Christmas, dear friends. Shayla here from Stuart Morris Textiles, and today I wanted to show you how I make natural holiday decorations, all plastic free, that I can make each year anew and then leave in the woods for the animal at the end of each season. First up, I wanna make some dried orange slices. These are everywhere on social media if you have ever logged on, and they're really simple and really pretty to make. So I wanna show you today how I make them in my oven without a food dehydrator. And hopefully, um, because I've done this so many times, I can share my foolproof recipe with you. All right, so you can use any citrus for this, but in my experience, medium-sized oranges and lemons are the simplest. I wanted to try this grapefruit this year, but I ended up eating it while filming this, so another year, I guess. <laughs> The first thing I'm going to do is slice off the rounded end of my orange and set it aside. I'm going to slice the center portion of my orange into quarter inch slices, which is just under six millimeters, and then set the other rounded edge off to the side as well. You can dry these rounded edges if you like, but they usually take a really long time to dry. This one took about two days in the oven. So compared to our normal slices, which take about one day, I suggest using them for something else, which I will show you in a second. Your slices should be about a quarter inch thick, as I said, and I can normally get about three or four out of a medium sized orange. Most importantly for this step though, you just wanna make sure that your slices are as even as possible. I don't have a food dehydrator, so getting these just right has been a lot of trial and error, but I think I finally have it down. You want to dry these out completely without overcooking them, which will make them shrivel and brown. The key is to slice them correctly and evenly and keep a close eye on them in the oven. I'm going to use a baking sheet and some parchment paper and then just place my orange slices on top of that. I set my oven to its lowest temperature, which is 170 degrees Fahrenheit and about, or about 77 degrees Celsius. It's okay if these touch, it's not gonna hurt anything. Once your slices are in the oven with those round orange edges, go ahead and make yourself a cup of orange juice. For the first six to eight hours, I'm going to flip these orange slices every 90 minutes. After that, I'm going to flip them every 45 to 60 minutes, removing the slices that are done each time, checking on each. The trick is to dry them all the way without overcooking them. If you leave them in for too long, they will brown and shrivel up a little bit. You know they are done when they feel hard to the touch. If you squeeze your slice, they don't smush, and if you tap the two together, they make a bright staccato sound. Keep flipping them and removing the finished ones for as many hours as it takes till the last one is finished. Mine normally take between 10 and 12 hours for the whole batch to be finished. These ones are done, so I am going to separate them and pop the rest of those back in the oven. When you are done and they are all dry, you want to put a long tie through the center and make sure you tie a knot like this one above each slice and leave a long tail. You tie two knots, the next one up at the top, so that the orange is facing you when you tie it to a wreath or garland instead of hanging sideways where you can only see the side of the slice. Look how gorgeous this is already looking. Next up, I wanna talk about the cranberry garland. This one is pretty straightforward. The only thing that I suggest is using a long tapestry needle for upholstery sewing. This angular point of the needle makes pulling my thread through the cranberries really easy and makes something like using wax thread totally unnecessary. I'm using cotton weaving yarn because it's what I had on hand, but you can use most mid-weight string for this. A lot of people use dental floss for this step and these garlands, which is a bit expensive depending on how much you're making, but it is slick and it's very strong, so good for cranberry garland. As you can see, my son also loves making these, so let's get the whole family involved in this. To tie them off, I suggest a similar tie to the orange slices, not because you have to worry about which direction it's facing, 
just because if you keep them very long like I like to, they need to be tacked to something sort of substantial or if you're going to add them to another cranberry garland to make an even longer one, you need to have a bit of um, space to tie these so that you can make a substantial knot or if you're going to use a nail on the wall, you need to have room to make a knot so that there's a little space where the thread can be attached to a knot. So I put one knot at the end of my cranberry garland and then just like my last orange slice, I'm gonna put another double knot at the end of my string. And there we almost, there we have it. So cranberry garlands are pretty simple to make and they're so gorgeous and that red is so high impact next to the orange and the green. I just get so excited about these, please make them. All right, next let's do popcorn garland. I am using just a regular sewing needle and some very normal, boring, regular sewing uh, thread. I see a lot of people calling for using beeswax on your thread because it's breaking, you need it to be stronger, something like that. But I find if you make these garlands quite short and then connect them together afterwards, your string will not break. I've just used a doubled up regular sewing needle and thread, and I've never had a single problem. I don't even make them stale and wait a few days. So I'm just gonna leave a long strand of my freshly popped popcorn and put my needle through the center and strongest part of the popcorn. If you can imagine this popcorn, when you look at it, it looks a little bit like an octopus. Just put it through the octopus head, sorry for that imagery, but you will have a long strand of popcorn garland, no problem. I don't even think you need beeswax, honestly. I'm gonna cut the needle off and again, make the same kind of end as everything else. And lastly, I wanna throw this one in, which is tying fragrant pine cones to your tree or wreath or evergreen garland as an awesome way to make every room smell so good. Just tie some sewing thread to the top tier of your pine cone scale in a double knot and that is it. I don't know why more people don't do this one. It's so gorgeous and it makes every room smell like Christmas. So there you have it. Those are all of my recipes for making natural Christmas decorations. I think that these look so great and the whole family loves making them together. It's a wonderful way to kick off the holiday season. So I hope you try these out and I hope you have a lovely holiday season. Merry Christmas to those who celebrate and happy holidays to everybody, no matter what you celebrate. Next up, we'll be back to textiles in the next video, I promise. Happy holidays, everybody.